Council system is a system of volunteers and we are in this together. As we move forward with virtual meetings, check in with your board members to ensure everyone is able to participate. Remember, everyone has different levels of computer and tech literacy. We ask that you be patient and be helpful and help everyone along the way. Also, if you need help, ask for help. Share what your needs are because whatever you're experiencing, I know there are others in the neighborhood council system who are experiencing the same thing. Let's bring it to life, figure it out together. Attendees will be able to ask questions to the department and we will either answer them during the Q&A portion after each section or our NEA will follow up with you. You are able to ask questions by utilizing the question and answer feature on the bottom of your Zoom panel. You can type in your questions and we will answer your questions during the course of this training. We recognize not all of your questions may be answered today in this training, so please take note and follow up with your NEA. We will also post a recording of this training and additional follow-up questions and answers on the department's website shortly. We will dedicate 10 minutes of Q&A after each section, and you can always contact me, Sammy Park, at semi.park, S-E-M-E-E dot P-A-R-K at lacity.org or by calling 818-374-6851. So for today's training, we'll be covering the following topics. One, we will provide an overview for the Empower LA Virtual Governance Plan. Two, review the agenda posting requirements. Three, we'll provide an overview of Zoom. We'll also share with you where you can find the resources for technical support. We'll cover the role of the department in supporting you during this virtual meeting um, era and the four roles of uh, four neighborhood councils to consider in a virtual meeting and most importantly, how to conduct public comment. Our goal during the COVID-19 pandemic is to help neighborhood councils seek accurate information about the emergency, provide neighborhood councils with the tools that they can share with their communities and follow the mayor's executive order to stay safe at home. When the mayor's safer at home order was first announced on March 17th, the department was preparing our team to telecommute. We then embarked on our journey to prepare the neighborhood council system for a virtual meeting environment. After the City Council held their first virtual meeting on March 27, we gleaned lessons learned from our city family and we thank our colleagues for their guidance and support, including Council President Nuri Martinez, the Information Technology Agency known as ITA, the Office of the City Clerk, and the City Attorney's Office, particularly the Neighborhood Council Advice Division, Emergency Management Department, the Board of Recreation and Park Commissioners and the Department on Disability. On April 2nd, ITA issued the virtual meeting protocol for city council boards and commission, and we adapted these protocols for the NC system to develop the Empower LA Virtual Governance Plan, AKA the EVG plan. The EVG plan outlines the department's virtual governance department's objectives, which is to develop a uniform virtual meeting and public comment protocol for neighborhood councils and provide board members with a baseline level of skills for governing in a virtual meeting environment. We applied the knowledge and tips shared by our city family to successfully hold the first virtual board of neighborhood commissioners meeting on April 14th. Since then, the department has offered two EBG webinars the Roberts Rule Made Simple, in which the basics of parliamentary procedures are covered and with additional learning opportunities available online. Today, we are offering training for board members on the technical and procedural aspects to holding a virtual meeting starting Friday, May 1st. It is important for us to develop a comprehensive system that is equitable and accessible to all. We thank you for your patience and willingness to be a pioneer in the largest civic engagement system in the country now conducted virtually. Before we move on to the next section, I also want to provide a quick overview of the various acronyms that we're throwing out there like EVG and where you can find the resources we are referring to. Okay. 
And um, before I do that, I do see our general manager, Raquel, who has jumped on. Raquel, would you like to do an uh, introduction or a welcome? Thank you. I just want to say hi to everybody and to thank the uh, people who are participating in this training. This is the fourth webinar slash training that we've offered in a five day period of time. Uh, combined with all of you today, we have served uh, almost 800 people in that much time um, who have been uh, building their skills, presenting us with wonderful questions uh, as we think move forward in this, in this environment. This is a new territory for all of us. We've learned from all of you by the questions that you're asking. We built this around data that you provided to us during the listening tour. We were able to repurpose funding of the department in order to be responsive to the things that you have told us were of interest to you. But this won't be the end of that process. You will find as you, as you have your journey through virtual uh, governance, that there will be more questions that you have, more, more things that you would like for us to provide you, <clears throat> and we are here to do that for you. I do acknowledge the team for the work that they have done in order to pull all this together, and all of you for the patience you've had uh, with, with the department during these very trying times in this COVID-19 pandemic era. So I turn it back to Semi and thank all of you, and I'll be back on uh, for the Q&A. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so if you notice me turning my head, it's because um, I have multiple screens. Um, it is a bit to manage, um, especially if you're utilizing the screen share function. Uh, so please bear with me. Uh, but for now, I um, want to give folks a quick overview of the Empower LA uh, virtual governance portal. Um, so if you go to our website, empowerla.org, backslash EVG. All of the materials that we are referring to in this training is available on our EVG page. EVG stands for Empower LA Virtual Governance. On this page, you will be able to access the EVG protocol document, which will provide more in-depth information on what is covered in today's training. We've also provided resources such as agenda templates, required agenda language, and a sample meeting script to assist you. Um, so for th those of you who are following along on the Zoom video features, um, here is our EVG page. Um, there are a couple of ways you can navigate this page. One is on the top right-hand side, we have the main documents um, that you will need in order to continue with virtual meetings. Uh, we do have the EVG plan. If you click on the right-hand side, it will take you to the section on the page. Um, and, we, and we also have the, the portal in which- me, Excuse me, Sammy? Yes. Um, currently, the screen is not being able to be viewed by the attendees. Oh, thank you. Thank you for that, Freddie. So they might have missed uh, the first part of the portion on the, on the visual aspect. All right, all right. So let me see what is going on here. Okay, share screen. So let's do this. Apologies. All right, how's that, everybody? Better? All right, all right. That's great. Thank you, thank you so much, Freddie. Okay, so let's do this again. Um, so this is the EVG portal. If you go to the department's website, empowerla.org backslash EVG, you will be able to see um, all of the documents that we are referring to. But more importantly, if you scroll down, you'll be able to view our Empower LA virtual governance protocol. Uh, we've adapted the protocols uh, based on the procedures set by our city family, which includes the city council, commission, and committees. And the, for this training and the, the content that we are providing is included more in detail on this Empower LA virtual governance protocol. In addition, we have several attachments that will be helpful for you when you conduct your 
virtual meeting, including required and highly recommended agenda language. We have some sample meeting scripts for our neighborhood councils to utilize and a sample agenda. Um, we also have some recommended Zoom settings, which we will get into um, later on in this training. And we have some voting fact sheets to help uh, your neighborhood councils um, un have a better understanding of how official action can occur because there are several um, various ways official action is counted within the neighborhood council system. So let's see if we have any questions up until this point. Bear with me, folks. Here we go. Okay, so this session began at 10 a.m. And this meeting or this training is being recorded. Um, we will have um, the training posted on our website and we will also be posting some follow-up questions um, on our website as well. We do recognize not all of the questions will be answered and our procedures may modif be modified as we uh, hear from our neighborhood councils what the needs are. Um, just from yesterday's ses uh, session, we had some questions about recusals. How do you conduct that virtually? Um, so we will be providing those um, details shortly. Attendees are not on camera um, and you will not be able to participate in terms of speaking and interacting um, with us during this training. However, you will be able to ask the question by typing your question in and we will um, answer through the course of this training just as I am doing um, currently. Um, I do want to remind folks, uh, this training and the webinars on Robert's Rule Made Simple from Monday and last week is not mandatory, um, but it is highly recommended just to get folks comfortable with a virtual meeting setting. We will also be reaching out um, individually as NEAs to your NCs to see how we can provide that one-on-one -on -one support to your neighborhood council. The only three trainings that is required for neighborhood council board members is the ethics, funding, and code of conduct, which is available on the department's website, um, which will take you to the Cornerstone portal, which is the online training portal for you to take these trainings. Uh, this training will end at 12 o'clock. And uh, in order to access the protocols, you go to empowerla.org, EVG, and you scroll down to the Empower LA Virtual Governance Protocol, there's a drop-down menu. If you click on that, it will take you to the Google Doc. In this next section, we will review the agenda posting requirements. Notice how I said we are reviewing the agenda posting requirements because nothing has changed. One, all neighborhood council boards and committee meetings must follow the Brown Act requirements to physically post your agenda. And two, following the Board of Neighborhoods Commissioners, aka the Commission's agenda posting policy requires you to post your NC's agenda on your website and through an e-blast if applicable. And three, to the city's early notification system by submitting your agenda to ncsupport.org. Side note, um, you can sign up to receive email notifications of your NC's meeting by going to our uh, web, web page, which I will show folks here.
So here is our website. If you go to self-serve, um, first uh, going back to our cornerstone training, um, if you go to board member training, learn more, it'll take you to another portal um, in which you can log into your cornerstone site. Uh, we also do refer back to the EVG portal. Um, so if you ever need to find it, you can always find it on our self-serve page. Um, we also have some additional materials to assist you in your board meeting. Um, but to sign up for the early notification system, um, you can click on early notification subscription, click on neighborhood council agenda, and then from here, select the neighborhood council you would like to sign up for. Type in your name and your email address and subscribe. And whenever agendas are submitted to ncsupport.org, the department will post those agendas to the city's early notification system. And those who are subscribed will receive the agendas in their email inbox. Also remember for regular board and committee meetings, the agenda must be posted at the minimum 72 hours in advance of the meeting. And for special meetings, a minimum of 24 hours in advance of the meeting. However, we recommend that if your neighborhood council is hosting a special meeting, please post the agenda with more than 24 hour notice to provide the public with more notice time. Because the neighborhood council system is operating virtually, we want to make sure the public is made aware of this change. Also, the commission's agenda posting policy applies to canceled meetings as well. If you will not be meeting during a regularly scheduled date and time, please be sure to post a cancellation notice so that the public is informed of your regularly scheduled, that your regularly scheduled meeting will not be occurring. We also have a sample cancellation notice on our EVG page. If you need help with physically posting the agenda, please reach out to your NEA or contact ncsupport at lacity.org. In order to accommodate your request, we ask that you submit your request five business days in advance of the meeting. We will confirm with you if this request can be accommodated based on staff availability. So we'll also pause here and see if there are any additional questions. Okay. All right. And we resolved the screen sharing page. So thank you folks for your comments. Um, you will run into some glitches. Um, I will say even from my personal experience, uh, when we conducted our training last night, uh, we changed a few things. For example, on Zoom, you can do a share screen. Um, and so folks were notifying the department that uh, what I was sharing was a little bit small. So um, last night we were sharing, sharing the screen like this which is a little bit smaller. So when I converted it to a full screen uh, for today, it did mess up some of the settings that I have in which right now I'm reading a script um, and then I have the Zoom settings on a different monitor. So um, it's a little bit different. So it is a bit to manage and we do recommend practicing getting your settings set up um, so that you can work out these kinks. Um, the department, we are happy to host uh, the meetings and we're also happy to help your neighborhood council conduct some practice runs. I know Freddie has been working with some of his NCs and I believe it was a, over a two hour um, training. Um, so we're happy to make ourselves available so that you're comfortable um, on conducting your meeting. Um, the department will provide a Zoom account and we will go into more detail on how the licenses will be released. Um, uh, we can spend a little bit more time on 
cancellations and how to cancel a meeting. So normally, uh, let me minimize the screen, go back to our EVG page. Um, what I'm doing right now is going to our EVG page under additional attachments and resources. We also have the, these documents here linked directly into the EVG governance protocol. Let me also do full screen if it helps. And here is a sample cancellation notice. So it looks like a regular agenda. The big thing to note is there's a big canceled at the top and then it does list when your meeting would have occurred. Um, this is important so that uh, when folks see the cancellation notice, they see what meeting is being canceled and when the meeting would have occurred. Um, when you draft the cancellation notice, you will have to physically post. You will also have to post the notice on your website and an e-blast if you do if you have a uh, news uh, email subscription of your stakeholders and you will submit to nc support so that we can submit a uh, post to the city's early notification system We will be able to provide our neighborhood councils um, with um, those who have subscribed to the ENS. Um, so contact your NEA and we will get that to you. If you have already signed up to receive um, agendas through the ENS system, you do not need to resubscribe, um, but you, there is an option to unsubscribe um, if you do not want to receive um, those notifications anymore. Um, I will spend a little bit, a little bit of time going back to our website um, just to walk folks through, and let me do full screen, just to walk folks through the portal. Um, so this is the EVG portal, which includes the Roberts Rule portal. So for board members who participated in the Roberts Rule Made Simple webinar, which occurred last Thursday and Monday evening, uh, which covered the basics of parliamentary procedures, a little bit about um, conducting your meeting in a virtual environment, um, also available to you is the Roberts Rule Made Simple portal. This is a separate portal, but this is where you would find information um, and the videos um, of the webinar on this portal. You will have to create an account to go to the Roberts Rule Made Simple portal in which then you will be able to access all the materials available through Roberts Rule Made Simple. And the Roberts Rule Made Simple is a different login than your Cornerstone login in which you take your ethics, funding, and code of conduct training. NEA stands for Neighborhood Empowerment Advocate, who, uh, who is the department's field staff and the representatives that you see at your neighborhood council meetings. Um, if you want to find out who your NEA is, you can go to our website, go to Neighborhood Councils, All Council, and there we, we do have all 99 here, and you'll click on one, and you will also be able to see who your field rep or your NEA is in addition to your funding rep. You'll also find your bylaws and the training compliance status for all of your board members. Uh, remember, in order to serve on the board, code of conduct is required. 
Um, if you do not complete your code of con conduct training, you may be eligible for suspension um, and ultimately removal. Um, and ethics and funding training is required if you would like to participate on uh, voting on funding items. Starting May 1st, um, the suspension has been lifted. So any action taken by the board starting May 1st um, will be valid. So in terms of putting in, inserting the call-in information for Zoom for your agenda, we will cover that later on in this topic. If you do have an existing Zoom account, um, we, we will have to discern um, whether or not you will be able to use your private Zoom account to conduct neighborhood council business. Um, but however, we do know that if you do purchase Zoom um, or provided by the city with public funds, uh, you will not be able to utilize Zoom for your personal needs. Cancellation policy also applies to committee meetings as well. And the cancellation notice it policy still applies during COVID. So if you do need help with posting your agenda physically, please reach out to your NEA. All right, we're gonna move on to the next se section, uh, but please keep your questions coming. So why Zoom? The Neighborhood Council system will be utilizing Zoom to conduct their virtual meetings. Zoom is a virtual meeting and teleconferencing platform approved by ITA based on the functions available and the security features provided. All Neighborhood Council meetings will be set as a webinar. And we'll get into more details on the webinar, but I also wanna show folks um, what, this, what this looks like on on the Zoom platform. Let me close a few tabs. So this is Zoom, you'll log in. And um, notice how on the left-hand side, you have you're able to schedule meetings and you're also able to schedule webinars. For neighborhood council meetings, you will have to schedule it as a webinar because of the additional features in which you can turn on and off. So just to show folks, um, when you schedule a meeting, and let me see if I can zoom in for people a little bit. You type in the description, you set the date, um, and then some there's additional features in which you will follow disabling a lot of this. And then there's also the setting section in which you will access to set additional settings. So for neighborhood council meetings, you must set it up as a webinar because it provides additional features in which you can turn on and off. For example, the webinar allows you to turn off chat and Q&A. It also enables you to mute all attendees participating in the meeting, allowing you to unmute each attendee during public comment. The webinar also allows you to turn off video for all attendees. Um, I wanna make a distinction. Uh, we're using the term attendee and, the, and it applies to members of the public. I will be referring to board members as panelists and we'll get to that um, shortly because it is a feature in the webinar setting. It is recommended that the video be turned off for board, board members to minimize Zoom bombings and other potential disruptions to the meeting. If board members are comfortable with Zoom and would like to turn on the video for board members, please note that additional agenda language and instructions for public comment will be needed. 
to highlight the raise hand function for members of the public. If your neighborhood council will be utilizing the video feature, be aware of your background surroundings. Are there personal items in the background? What about family members walking in and out? Will the video conferencing occur in a quiet space with minimal interruptions? So these are things for you to consider for not only yourself, but your whole board. Um, and if, if your board chooses to move forward with video, board members still have the options to turn on video or turn it off. Also, we recommend check on your lighting, especially if your meeting is occurring in the evening. If your meeting is occurring in the daytime, be sure that the light source is not behind you, such as sitting in front of a window. A little bit about licenses. Uh, this department will be issuing Zoom licenses for each neighborhood council. Your NEA has reached out to your president to determine who to release the license to. Due to the increased demand on Zoom, we are still working on working to distribute Zoom licenses to neighborhood councils. So thank you for your patience. In the meantime, your NEA will be able to host the meeting for you. Each Zoom account um, comes with a personal meeting ID. It is important that when you that you secure and protect your personal meeting ID found under your profile. So let me go back to the Zoom screen. Um, if you go to profile, you'll actually see your personal meeting ID versus a webinar. Once you create a webinar. Let me just show folks. It will generate a webinar ID that is unique to that session. Um, also, how you invite panelists, which are board members, um, there's an edit function here. But for the purposes of your agenda, what you'll do is open this for invite attendees copy the invitation and what you'll need is the telephone number and the webinar ID. So you can select one telephone number. Um, 669 is the most local to us. I believe it's San Jose and then you'll include a webinar ID. So what is a webinar? A webinar is a Zoom technical term that describes how the neighborhood council meeting will be conducted. In order to adhere to the Brown Act and for cybersecurity measures, NC meetings must be conducted as a webinar. Attendees will participate in the meeting telephonically only and will be able to access the webinar meeting by calling into the Zoom telephone number provided on the agenda and dialing in the webinar ID. Attendees will not need a Zoom account to participate. There may be members of the public who are savvy enough on Zoom to participate in the meeting using the Zoom app or desktop version. However, you as board members will not be able to see them only hear them and they will be muted upon entry. You will see their name or telephone number um, to indicate um, folks that have jumped on the meeting, but in terms of seeing their video, if you set follow all of the settings, you will not see your attendees in a video. And that's, that's the key difference between a webinar and a meeting in Zoom. Meeting, um, you're not able to distinguish the two groups of participants, um, where in a meeting, everyone's all in one room, um, which is not conducive to running a neighborhood council meeting. Um, so webinar does allow you to separate out the two groups. Okay, so um, I mentioned settings. So if you go to our EVG page, and you click on recommended Zoom settings. We do have um, some settings that you can follow, which includes the ability, which includes um, options such as um, password, 
um, muting the participants upon entry, just in case folks, um, when they first jump on the, the Zoom call, their mics are live. Um, so you want to mute everybody, and this includes attendees as well, so that they will only be able to speak um, during public comment. Um, disabling chat functions, disabling private chat, um, you do want to turn on the function to allow a co-host um, to allow other board members or department staff to assist you um, running this meeting. Um, even for today's training, I have two additional co-hosts assisting me, um, helping me field certain, certain questions and helping with tech support. Um, and then also, um, screen share if you want to um, project your agenda on while you're conducting your zoom meeting um, so these are some of your some of the few features that uh, we have provided an overview for okay you will also need to turn off certain functions when creating your webinar and in your settings which is accessible only by logging into zoom so what I mean by that is when you're creating your webinar, yes, there are some features that you can turn on and off, but you'll also need to go to settings to set the additional settings. And it looks like this on the back end. Okay. Okay. With your Zoom account comes unlimited cloud storage to allow you to record your neighborhood council's meeting. You can record both video and audio or audio only. If you choose to record your meeting, you will need to save your recording for at least 30 days before you delete the recording. Additionally, please note that each neighborhood council maintains their own records retention policy and it is up to each NC to determine and develop a clear process on what is maintained, who maintains NC records, how these records are stored, who is responsible for responding to Cali the California Public Records Act request. So I will stop here and let's go back to some questions questions. So um, earlier I mentioned uh, five business days before the meeting. That is only if your neighborhood council needs assistance from the department to physically post. If you do not have members on your board who is able to physically post your agenda and you need the department's help, um, if you can give us um, two additional days before the 72 hours requirement for your regular meetings, that will give us enough time to um, figure out who's available, if we can do it or not. And we will definitely confirm with you whether or not this accommodation can be made. Um, so I, I'm, I have a question about a URL um, to access Zoom is zoom.us. To access the department's EVG page is empowerla.org backslash EVG. There is not a minimum amount of time to cancel a meeting. Um, and, there, and we do recognize sometimes these cancellations do happen last minute. Um, but we do ask to, um, you know, still follow the commission's agenda posting policy to physically post, post on your website and e-blast if applicable, and also submitting to the department's NC support at lacity.org so that we can note, um, post it into the early notification system. Um, this is regardless of how, um, when, the ca when you are notified of, your, of the cancellation, I think it's really important you let the stakeholders know if the meeting is canceled. Um, I do recognize we are approaching May 1st. Um, unfortunately, as of today, we do not have the Zoom licenses ready for distribution to our neighborhood council, so we do apologize. Uh, we are pushing Zoom to um, get these licenses, um, and uh, 
in the interim, our NEAs do have the ability to host these webinar meetings for your neighborhood council. Um, and we are able to host multiple um, meetings. Um, so just work with us and uh, work, give us some time so we can coordinate uh, internally. Only the host will be able to schedule the meeting. Um, so there are some terms and conditions where um, for Zoom, you know, it's really not good practice to share the login information um, according to Zoom, um, but we also recognize there are some internal organizational processes uh, amongst the neighborhood councils. Um, so if you have specific questions on who gets what, um, First, um, you're, hap you're welcome to consult with us, but it's also a conversation to have with your president on who would receive the license from the department. Um, last week, we have contacted the presidents and we have an initial list of those who will receive the licenses for your NC. Um, so connect with us or connect with your chair or president um, to sort all of this out. So, if your neighborhood council, your host, or whoever holds your Zoom license um, is scheduling board meetings and committee meetings, you're only able to schedule one webinar meeting at a time, meaning you cannot have two meetings occurring at the same time um, because the license only allows for one webinar at a time. Um, so what the alternative is, is the NC can host one and there are 15 NEAs in our department and we will be able to host your other committee meetings. Um, but again, we ask that you work with us so that we can evaluate who's available and the uh, staff resources that we have. You will need to determine with your NC whether or not you will record uh, your board meeting or committee meeting. This training is recorded, um, but we also recommend you do take notes on questions, additional questions that you have um, if it does not get answered in, in this Q&A se uh, session as we're going through the training. Um, we will provide additional agenda language if your board chooses to move forward with video connect with your NEA, um, but the, the crux of the issue um, is just in making sure you include the raise hand feature. If you look at our sample script and you look at our sample agenda, um, it indicates uh, members of the public to press star nine to indicate that he or she or they would like to speak um, and participate during public comment. But if you are gonna be using video, um, uh, members of the public will be able to access your meetings as well through the Zoom um, app or desktop version in which a raise hand function can also be utilized. Um, but connect with your NEA and we will work with you on the specifics. Um, so the recording of the meeting, if you choose to record, will be held for 30 days and that is required. After 30 days, it's up to your neighborhood council to determine um, you know, your own records retention policy. In terms of your minutes, the Board of Neighborhood Commissioners has uh, have their, have set a minutes posting policy and I'm happy to walk folks through, um, which does have some deadlines for neighborhood councils, uh, which include um, making sure you post your minutes 30 days uh, after that meeting has occurred and you can find all the details under commission policy and we have an amended minutes policy resolution. Let me see if I can zoom in. And so neighborhood councils will be required to keep written minutes for all regular and special board meetings and the approved written minutes shall be posted on the neighborhood council's website uh, within 30 days of the regular or special meeting uh, at which they are approved. Okay. 
if you do have a minute minute taker and uh, the minute taker needs to access the recording, I want to turn it over to our tech team, Jose or Gibson, if you're able to answer that. Uh, how would someone um, share the recording with the minute taker? Hi, good afternoon, Gibson. Good morning, Gibson here. Um, you are able to, you have two options when it comes to saving audio or the meeting. You can save it on your computer or in the cloud. Each account will give you the ability to go into the settings and to be able to find the recordings and you can download the, the audio or uh, and you can you can share with the minutes taker or if you save it on your laptop you can say and you can save send it to your minute taker as well so you do have two options whichever you feel comfortable with uh, and the cloud is easy to download at any time or in the on your computer after the meeting is completed uh, zoom automatically just downloads it into your computer but if it's saved in the cloud it automatically saves in there in, in the cloud thank you Gibson um, and we do recognize, again, that some neighborhood councils may have multiple committees at the same time. So work with the department and we'll um, work to get uh, additional webinars available to you. Semi, if I may answer one more question. Please. Um, it is also, there's a question about private or city Zoom account. What we are uh, letting neighborhood council board members, as Semi had mentioned, this is a, these are accounts that the department will be providing to you as neighborhood council board members. It will be provided to uh, a board member or someone within the board who has been assigned or who the president has acknowledged will be the account holder. Once that person has been identified, you will get a notification that you do have access into the Zoom account for this, for that neighborhood council. So it is, a, uh, it, it is something that we will be sharing in the course of the week once we are sorted out with uh, Zoom's team in the back end. Thank you, Gibson. And um, only one person will initially be provided um, the Zoom license. Um, so it is up to that person, the host, in which we'll cover the role of the host later in this training um, to schedule all board and committee meetings. Um, because this is a virtual meeting, um, we do not have actual physical speaker cards to turn in. We do have a section where we will cover public comment and uh, some announcements that you will have to make to inform the members of the public that are listening in how to participate, uh, mainly by giving um, some guidance in the beginning and then when the agenda item is called and then also instructing your the members of the public to press star nine to indicate um, to those of us who are conducting the meeting on the back end um, who wishes to speak. Um, but we will go into public comment in more detail later. Yes, so if you do record your meeting, it is subject to the Open Records Act, also known as the California Public Records Act, and you will have to keep your recording minimum 30 days. Okay, we're gonna go now into the next section, which is tech technical support. In addition to our training here today, the EBG protocols document provides how-to guides available on Zoom support page. We have included guides for how to manage webinars, overview of panelists versus attendees, how to join a meeting by phone, turning on closed captioning, and how to access the interpretation function. While all of us today may be comfortable with video conferencing, as many of you guys are participating on the Zoom platform and can see me, um, there may be some board members who may not be comfortable with this technology. In order to participate, members of the public will not need a Zoom account. Let me repeat this. You will not need a Zoom account in order to participate during public comment or even to listen in on the meeting. When the, um, even for board members to participate as a panelist, you are not required to create a Zoom account. Uh, when the host, uh, that one person on your neighborhood council that has the Zoom license invites the panelists, you will receive an email from Zoom 
with the call-in number and participant ID. Um, so for folks that um, don't have a Zoom account, board members that do not have a Zoom account, um, when you receive an email from Zoom, that email will contain a telephone number you can call into, and then um, you'll punch in your meeting ID, and then you'll also uh, punch in or dial in uh, your participant ID so that the system knows that you are participating as a panelist. However, a few board members will need to create a Zoom account to play the role of the host and co-host um, and more to come on that later. If you or your board member requires additional assistance, please reach out to your NEA for support or contact the department and we will connect you with your NEA to provide the one-on-one -on -one support. Zoom has the ability to offer closed captioning and accommodation and accommodate interpretation in several languages. However, staff will need to be secure to provide the captioning or interpretation, uh, meaning either DOD, a Department on Disability, will um, secure someone to provide ASL, American Sign Language interpretation, or closed captioning, and uh, working with your um, vendors um, to secure to secure interpreters for your meeting. The department in partnership with the city clerk's office will be covering all costs associated with interpretation services for neighborhood councils during this EBG process. Closed captioning and ASL interpretation will be provided at no cost to the neighborhood council courtesy of the department on disability. Please contact the department at least three, but preferably five, business days in advance of your meeting so that the department can accommodate your request. We recognize last minute requests happens or you, um, you may not receive your request in time, um, but we do um, ask that you work with us and be mindful of um, us calling and working with the vendors to schedule this out. The EVG protocol document also provides step-by-step -step guides on how to turn on the closed captioning and interpretation function. Um, we do recognize that um, and we are working to develop a process um, so that more support can be provided in different languages, especially on the technical end to walk not only board members through, um, but also members of the public on how to participate um, using the interpretation function on Zoom. Okay, so we will stop here and also go into additional Q and A, or Q and A. Um, so I will say that Zoom, it's, Zoom has terms where only one person should have the login information. Um, but again, I recognize that each neighborhood council has their own internal process. Um, so we ask that um, to try to abide by the conditions set by Zoom, um, but also we recognize the reality of um, operating your neighborhood council as well. Um, we have a question about the meeting ID link being encrypted or special coded. I'm, I'm not sure if I can answer that. I don't know if our tech team will be able to. So, uh, hi, good morning, everybody. Gibson Yambura from the team again. Uh, just want to let everybody know the Zoom a meeting ID link is usually automatically generated by Zoom based off of how the security configurations do, um, do occur. So the meeting ID is accessible to every Whenever a meeting ID is created, just know anybody can access it. Uh, you can go through Zoom and plug in that number and it will take you to the meeting uh, that's happening based off of that number. So even though it, it's, it's a question about being security linked, it's just based off of how Zoom does it, but it is accessible if you're searching for meeting number through Zoom. Okay, um, and yes, er, thank you, Gibson. Earlier, there was a question raised about a personal Zoom account at NC meetings. Um, so we do recognize that if you are a co-host, you will need to create a Zoom account. We would recommend that you create the Zoom account using an email address um, associated with uh, 
an email in which you are conducting your neighborhood council business. If it is linked to your personal email account in which you use Zoom for all your personal needs, um, we will have to seek additional uh, guidance on um, what the, uh, how to distinguish the use of personal versus private. Um, so for now, we, will, um, we are recommending to create a separate account that you will be using just for your neighborhood council business to have the ability to be a co-host. Send me one more question. Uh, we have a question about recording on the, on the computer. Just mm -hmm. letting you know, Google has the ability to, if you're gonna send the video to your minute taker, um, you do have the ability to save it on the Google Drive. If the file is too big, Google will let you, if you're using Gmail from, Based off of our experience, you you are able to use a file sharing service as Google Drive, to which that person can download that video. Uh, so you are once you're automatically able to use Gmail, it, what it does it creates a, a Google Drive link, and then once it gets to the sender, that person can access it and download the video. Thank you, and um, because. Um, Although for us here, we're using Zoom and using the video feature, when you're conducting your neighborhood council meeting, you really have to put on the mindset of conducting your meeting telephonically. So it, um, really, um, for, so the question of how does, uh, how do you take minute or secretary take board vote, we'll go into detail um, later. However, you will have to take a roll call voice vote and you will have to articulate the motion, the agenda item, and what is being voted on. Um, so you, re you really have to put yourself in the perspective of you are articulating every action that is occurring at your meeting. Um, in terms of recommended best practices on the role of um, the NEA at your neighborhood council meeting, it's really up to your neighborhood council to figure out what your need is. I would recommend start that initial conversation with your NEA, get comfortable with Zoom, maybe having an understanding of how Zoom works as a host, how webinar works, and then, um, you know, just having a conversation with your NEA, who will play what role, it may change where initially the NEA will host your meeting and uh, will help you moderate. And then your chair or president will continue to chair the meeting. Um, and then um, have, and basically you can, uh, we, we will be your staff, very similar to how city council conducts their meeting. Um, you have council president Nuri Martinez running and chairing the meeting, but you also have staff on the side letting the council president know, hey, we have public comment in the queue. Hey, we have a board member that needs to speak because um, you are focusing on reading your agenda and conducting your meeting. And especially if you have the video feature, you do want to um, have kind of a front facing view. Um, otherwise, um, you'll see a lot of this head motion going on as you're trying to um, navigate multiple screens. Um, and you can kind of see me doing that now. Um, so it's going to take a little bit of practice and we encourage you to reach out to your NEA to see kind of where we can best um, help support you. So you will have to manually um, invite each board member as a panelist when you create your webinar, meaning when you set your webinar, meaning when you set your meeting up, you will have to manually go in and type in each board member's email um, and make sure you use an email that the board member will be checking so that the Zoom information um, can be sent directly to the board member. Um, we've also found that sometimes copying and pasting the email into Zoom um, sometimes doesn't work. Um, so if you do experience that, just make sure you manually type in each uh, letter. Um, we will get back to you on assigning passwords for the meeting. Currently, our recommended setting is to turn passwords off. Um, and then if our tech team has additional guidance, um, please jump in any time. Yeah. Uh, hey, Sammy, it's Jose. Uh, 
so regarding the passwords, uh, the reason why we're recommending not to, to turn off the, that setting is that if you if a neighbor council does set a password for the meeting, you need to share that password with all your stakeholders uh, because you want to make sure that, you know, especially for Brown Act meetings, you want your stakeholders to be able to participate and in doing so they'll need that password to sign in into that meeting as well. Mm -hmm. So if you do experience some disruptions to the meeting, um, there's a couple of strategies in which you can take. Um, you can uh, recess the meeting, um, meaning you can turn the share screen off, turn off all of the videos and take a recess and then sort some stuff out on the back end. Um, in terms of uh, public comment disruptions, um, hopefully it'll be a little bit easier to manage um, because there is a time limit and there is the ability to mute uh, speakers. Um, but we will work with uh, each and every one of you. And as, as I stated earlier, we will learn together as a system. Um, so this EVG protocol is a living document and we will be making updates as we go along. We'll also be sure to indicate in a different um, text color what has been updated. Um, so we're asking to stay in regular communications with your NEA and we will, um, as we pioneer this first virtual uh, meeting for the neighborhood council system. In addition to that, uh, just adding on to what Semi has mentioned, just want to make, right, let everybody know that Zoom is consistently updating its uh, protocols uh, and they're updating the platform. So any continuous updates, you will see changes and we will continue just ensuring that our EVG protocols are reflective of those new changes. Uh, over the recent update, um, anybody who is caught sort of sharing uh, sort of Zoom bombing or any issues that regard to the safety of your attendees, Zoom now has a feature to which you can report that person who's report, uh, who is sharing stuff that it can be disruptive, similar to Zoom, that can be called Zoom bombing. They have a feature now to report that person, just as a security feature. Just want to let everybody know that that's what's happening within Zoom. They're mm -hmm. consistently updating and changing it. And so you will notice some of these changes being reflected in our documents as well. Mm -hmm. so, so while Zoom does have that feature, we do ask that you work with your NEAs um, because there are additional Brown Act considerations and also the First Amendment in which we will have to take into account. Um, so please work with us on, on um, how to deal with disruptions. Um, in terms of holding practice sessions for board members, uh, you will be able to hold practice sessions. However, you will have to keep those sessions to less than a majority of quorum due to Brown Act concerns. In terms of um, pre presentations by, um, by presenters or other speakers um, coming to your meeting, um, it's always best practice to have all of the supporting documents in advance of the meeting so that it can be shared with the public um, as your agenda goes out. Um, if there are supporting documents that appear after the fact, we recognize it does happen. Um, we will get back to you on the best way to share it with the public um, because there are some Brown Act considerations um, that we will have to seek clarification on. And I, moving forward, I will be sure to um, state the question um, as I answer. And then lastly, before we move on to the next section, um, are we, if a neighborhood council already has a Zoom account, is it possible to get a refund or change it into an Empower LA Zoom license? Um, we will get back to you all on that um, as we find out. All right, so next we will cover the role of the department. And the department is here to assist neighborhood councils with technical support to the best of our ability. We will also assist neighborhood councils physically post agendas if no one on the board is available. We ask that the request to post be submitted to your NEA at least five business days in advance. And you will receive confirmation from your NEA on whether we can accommodate your request. The department is also available to host your NC Zoom webinar meeting. B 
because we anticipate special board meetings to occur starting May 1st, we ask that you work closely with your NEA to ensure they are available and your NC's meeting does, do not conflict with another meeting. Currently in our neighborhood council systems, for regular meetings, there is at least one day of the week with six board member board meetings occurring. And there are several days in the month where over eight to 11 neighborhood council regular meeting or regular board meetings are occurring. If your neighborhood council is to hold a special and or a committee meeting, our NEA will work will need to work with other NEAs in order to accommodate your request. This will require course, close coordination and communication with your NC and internally with department staff. So um, just to illustrate right now, um, because neighborhood councils do not have your license, um, you will need the meeting ID or the webinar ID and the um, call in number so that you can put it on your agenda um, to post 72 hours in advance. Um, even if you are holding a special meeting, we are asking that you post a 72 hour advance notice to give uh, pu the public as much ample time as possible and notice so that um, they can participate. Um, so on the back end working backwards, that means um, we need um, you know, additional days before your 72 hour uh, requirement to post um, so that we can sort out, um, so that we can provide you with the um, meeting information to place on your agenda as you draft your agenda. Okay, and we'll also uh, now jump back into Q&A. So um, there might, be, um, so there's audio inter intermittently garbled in this session and video stalling. Uh, when I move and look right to center, um, I'm not sure what's happening there. It might be an internet connection on my end. It might be an internet connection on your end. Um, but we do ask that if you are participating um, with video, for your neighborhood council, making sure you have um, steady and strong internet connection is something that's recommended. Otherwise, when you are speaking, um, so, um, the audio may be garbled or you might be experiencing it. Um, versus if members of the public or board members are participating over the telephone, make sure you have good reception so that um, it's what you're speaking and what you're hearing is clear. So will all virtual meetings be called special meetings, including board and committee meetings? Um, that depends. If you are holding your board or committee meeting when it will regularly occur, then you will still agendize it as a regular meeting. If you, let's say your regular board meeting is on the fourth Wednesday of the month, but you can't wait, that, uh, but you have some pressing business that you would like to take up and you would rather hold your board meeting on the second Monday of the month, because it's deviating away from your regularly scheduled meeting, which is the fourth Wednesday, and now moving to a different date, the second Monday, it will be called a special. Although a special meeting only requires a 24 hour posting notice, we are asking and um, that board, uh, the board consider posting in well in advance of the 24 hours. And if you can uh, try to post at least 72 hours in advance, even for your special meeting. So um, in terms of, disruptions from attendees. Um, what you are able to do is you do have the ability to mute attendees. And if you follow all of our recommended settings, all attendees will be muted um, from the beginning when they enter the meeting. Um, so it is up to the moderator or the chair or the host, which I'll go over later shortly. Um, 
it's up to somebody on the neighborhood council or the department, whoever's hosting or running the meeting on the technical side um, to mute and unmute those speakers. So Sammy, if I can kick in a little bit um, and uh, maybe give you a chance to take a breath, you've been doing a phenomenal job here. So first I wanna just acknowledge you in this moment. This has been a lot of material. You're covering it um, slowly and carefully. And I just, I just wanna say that to you right now. There are several questions that are in, in the, on the list that are related to uh, your ability to access this information moving forward. And we'll be summarizing at the end where that information is. Semi Sem has already included some of that in her presentation so far, and I don't want to interrupt her flow because she's got a rhythm and I don't want to uh, get in trouble with her by disrupting it at this point. But just know that there will be all this material available for you to follow up on later. I really don't want you to stress about trying to absorb all of it right now in this two hour period of time. You'll have to grow into it and we are here to help you through that process. Um, and there is, a, there is a, a, a clarification we want to make about the reference to Zoom bombing for those of you who may not be familiar with that nomenclature, Zoom nomenclature at this point. And, uh, and that is, um, it has been the experience and they refer to it when people have a chat that's enabled, which is one reason it's not recommended. Um, and at times people have posted inappropriate content, which can include links or videos in that chat feature. Uh, which then which then becomes public. So it's considered um, a prudent security consideration to not have that feature. Um, and that's why the city council doesn't do it anymore. Actually, they had a challenge with that in their first experience on March 27th and since then gravitated to a different protocol, which is what we've embraced here. So I'll, I'll stop there and let you go back to me, but um, I just wanted to offer those thoughts for people and to give you a chance to kind of collect your breath. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, we're going to move on to the next section, which are the four roles. Um, so you've heard me throwing out the terms host, chair, and moderator. Um, this is where we will cover much of this. Um, so there are four main roles in hosting your neighborhood council webinar meeting. At the minimum, you will need two board members that can play multiple roles. Um, or let me let me correct my statement. At the minimum you will need two board members and board members can play multiple roles in, within the four roles that we've outlined. The first role is the host who will be the keeper of the Zoom license and will be responsible for scheduling webinars for board and committee meetings. The second role is the chair who will facilitate the meeting and will be the lead in working with the department to fulfill accommodation requests. The third role is the moderator who will moderate board member comment and public comment. The fourth role is the recorder who will take roll call, conduct roll call votes, and take minutes for the meeting. These four roles are recommended and we encourage you to adapt these roles to fit your neighborhood council's needs. Before we jump into the details of this role, if your neighborhood council would like to conduct a practice run, you will only be able to invite less than a majority of quorum of board members to participate. We recognize some neighborhood councils have smaller boards and you may need to conduct multiple practice sessions. Um, and so if that needs to occur and you need the department to assist you, um, we are happy to um, assist. Um, so to give you an example for the Board of Neighborhood Commissioners, uh, we had to have several um, practices where we had two commissioners jump on um, just to walk them through um, what to expect for the meeting that was held on the 14th. So um, a little bit more details in, about the four roles now. Um, the host will receive the Zoom license from the department and will be the technical lead. The host will be responsible for scheduling Zoom webinars for all board and committee meetings. It is important that the host be comfortable with Zoom and check the Zoom settings. Once the host schedules a webinar, the host will invite board members as panelists. All board members will be able to participate as a panelist regardless of having a Zoom account. 
when board members are invited to be panelists, you will receive an email directly from Zoom with the link to join the webinar on an internet enabled device, such as your PC, Mac, tablet, or phone. The email will also include a phone number to call into and the webinar ID and participant ID in order for you to join as a panelist. The host will also need to identify the Zoom phone number and webinar ID for the purposes of drafting your meeting agenda. The phone number and the webinar ID is how the public will access your meeting in order to listen in and to give public comment. Everyone entering the meeting using this dial-in method will be considered an attendee. The host has the ability to mute and unmute speakers. It is up to your neighborhood council to determine if the host will mute and unmute board members or leave all board members unmuted. The department is recommending to mute all board members who are panelists to minimize audio and background noise issues. Otherwise, it is best practice for board members to mute themselves when not speaking in order to minimize um, background noise. Um, sometimes you also get some echo feedback, so it's uh, always good practice to mute when you are not speaking. The host also has the ability to assign additional co-hosts. This is helpful in the case your moderator will be muting and unmuting speakers during public comment. Only the host and or the co-host has the ability to mute and unmute both panelists, board members, uh, panelists meaning board members, or attendees, which are members of the public attending your webinar meeting. You will be able to move the board members from the attendee panel to the participant panel. So what that means is, for whatever reason, if a board member um, did not get the email or just isn't able to join the meeting as a panelist, they can still call in um, using the number provided on the agenda and on the host will be able to move that individual to, um, to become a panelist. Um, but I'm also gonna um, ask our tech team to jump in on the specifics. Are you promoting an attendee to a participant or a panelist? Hi there, good morning everybody, Gibson here again. Um, as when you're setting up a Zoom account, sometimes you are, whenever you're setting up a, a Zoom webinar, you have the ability to ensure that ev everybody in your board is added before. You add them as panelists, so they log in. Inadvertently, sometimes you may forget someone, which is not intentional, that does happen. What happens is they can still click into the Zoom meeting as an attendee, and what happens is you can, you can search for them uh, in the, the attendees list, and then you have the ability to promote them as a panelist during the Zoom meeting. Um, but you can always do it before, but if that does happen, you can, you can promote someone. Uh, in addition to that, I, do, I did see a question about presentations. Similar to how we're doing, you can, have, you can have, let's say, if you're having a presentation from a department or, uh, or, or a project that's being, you can have that person be promoted as a panelist if they do wanna show, let's say, they do want to show the plans, they want to show images, you want to give them the ability to show the presentation so folks can see what's happening. Uh, and then once you're done, uh, once questions are uh, questions for public comment come in, what you can also do is once they're done, you can take them off as panelists and put them back as attendees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, so to elaborate on what Gibson said, um, if you anticipate presenters at your meeting and you don't have in advance their email address to invite them as a panelist from the beginning, um, that presenter can come, you, at any point you can promote them as a panelist so that um, they can share their screen or present materials. Um, but again, we will provide additional guidance on how to share the material that is presented at your virtual meeting with the rest of the public, especially because um, there will be members of the public who will not be able to see what is being presented. Um, so that is why it is always best practice to make sure you have all of your supporting documents in advance attached to your agenda so that, um, uh, so that it's very clear on what's being presented. We recognize some of these, um, 
some of these materials come in last minute. In a normal setting where we're meeting in person, when these um, documents are being presented, copies get distributed amongst the board. There's a stack available for the public, and then you have one copy that is for pub public view that is not to be removed. That's what occurs in a in-person meeting. Now in a virtual meeting, things do change a little bit more, and we will need to seek additional guidance on how to share materials that is not um, readily available on the uh, initial agenda. Um, so again, we will provide some additional clarification after we consult with our Neighborhood Council Advice Division. Okay, so the chair will be responsible for the, so in addition to the host, we have another role called the chair, who is generally can be the, the chair or your president, and the chair will be responsible for chairing the meeting. Um, it is recommended that the chair open the meeting with the run through of how the meeting will be conducted. And if you refer to our sample script, it gives you kind of those pointers and the points to cover. It's always best practice to open up the meeting with instructions for the public on how to participate during public comment, especially in this virtual environment. The chair will run the meeting and will guide the neighborhood council through the agenda. The chair, oh, here we go, better, full screen, sorry guys. The chair will also be the host and can also be the moderator, but it is recommended that another board member assist the chair when moderating the meeting. Um, I will say from personal experience, as I am chairing this training, um, it, it, there's a lot going on and I will not really be able to pay attention to uh, members of the public that have raised their hands. In this training, we're talking about Q&A, but for your NC meeting, we're really looking at the attendees and your uh, participant panel. Um, so I, it's very hard to manage both. So we're recommending at least to have one chair and one moderator. The chair can be the host, the moderator can be the host. Um, so the host is really more of the technical aspect, but for your meeting, actually, the actual running of the meeting, you'll need a chair and a moderator, and that's what the department is recommending. Um, the, as department staff, we can also help and play the role of a moderator as well. The chair is responsible for ensuring everyone has equal time to speak, which includes neighborhood council members and members of the public. The chair will also be responsible for ensuring that the speakers stay on topic and speak on matters germane to the agenda item. The chair will also be the one to state the motion and announce the final vote before moving on to the next agenda item. And this is to ensure um, it's going step by step to ensure that members of the public that are listening in and for board members who are participating, um, you know, everybody is clear on where we are in the process and where we are in the meeting. And with parliamentary procedures, uh, remember, it calls for all comments to be directed to the chair. Okay, the third role we have is the moderator who is responsible for reviewing the participant panel and managing the raised hands. There is, there's a raised hand feature on Zoom. Um, if you're on the desktop version, you'll be able to see what the panel participant panel will look like. Um, and it's really for the host or the moderator to manage this. The moderator's main role is to help with public comment. Um, and I see some of you guys practicing your raised hand feature. Um, I will not be able to call on you for this training. However, um, please know that it is working. So thank you, thank you. Um, the moderator will announce each speaker during public comment and should be responsible for muting and unmuting each speaker. The moderator acts as a timekeeper and will respectfully inform the speaker when their public comment time has elapsed. And for those of you who are raising your hands, um, please know that you are able to unraise your hand um, so that the moderator will know um, whether or not you want to speak on this agenda item versus the next agenda item. Um, and then as a moderator, you do have the ability to, um, I guess, lower the hand. 
on the technical side. If the if the speaker um, isn't able to or forgets to do so. Okay, the recorder is responsible for conducting roll call at the beginning of each meeting to establish quorum. Once a quorum has been established, each vote should be conducted as a voice vote and will conduct a roll call vote to ensure members of the public can hear each board member's vote. The recorder can be your secretary and or your minute taker. However, it is recommended that your secretary conduct all roll call votes while your minute taker simply records the meeting minutes. This is because your secretary is a board member while your minute taker can be an administrative staff and should not be speaking during the meeting other than to request board members for clarification for the purposes of taking minutes. Be sure to coordinate amongst yourselves on who will play what role. It's also recommended that board members arrive to the virtual meeting um, about 15 minutes before the meeting starts to work out any technical issues in advance of the meeting. If you choose to have your video feature on um, and, and you're setting up before the meeting, um, once the host opens the meeting, very similar for those of you who joined early, um, I had my video off for a while and then as I was kind of fiddling, looking at how I, uh, mo what my view is, meaning what you, what the audience will be seeing, um, I turned on my video feature and you were able to kind of see me just working. Um, but just be mindful that when your video is on before the meeting starts, folks will be able to see you um, and um, see you setting up. Finally, the department is available to assist by being a host or and or the moderator. Um, I think what we'll do is um, we have some examples on uh, doing some mock meetings and mock roll call. Um, what we'll do is we'll save that uh, either towards the end or we'll have another session where we can uh, provide kind of a visual run through um, of, of this meeting. Okay, so let's jump back into Q&A um, regarding the different roles. Hey, guys. Uh, if I, uh, just want to ask, answer a question. So I, we did get a question if, if that person is a board member as they're set up as a panelist by the Zoom host, if their internet does get faulty, Zoom does have a feature as a panelist for, to which it gives you a phone number for which you can call in and you can still be connected um, through the online, but it will give you a phone number to call in to which you can speak. Just make sure when you do that, mute your computer um, to, to avoid any feedback, that will, that will be the resolution to it. So if you do have faulty internet, that is an alternative during the meeting as a panelist. Thank you, Gibson. Um, this training will be available on our website um, and we will look into um, conducting more of these trainings, uh, maybe regionally or uh, offering more um, so other folks can join on. I do want to mention that for those asking questions about uh, managing public comment that that's following. Is that correct, Semi? Uh, can you repeat that again? Sorry about that. I just want to, for those individuals that are asking questions about how to manage um, public comment and speakers, we're going to be speaking to that in a little more detail in a little bit, right? Yes, absolutely. In the okay. next section. Yes. Terrific. Thank All right, you. good. I just want them to know that's coming. Yes. Um, uh, so we have one question. Is there some kind of mechanism for phone in panelists to raise hand? Yes. Um, so in our meeting script, we do provide um, kind of uh, how to make those announcements. But for those of us here, it's star nine. If you're um, joining the meeting via telephone, um, because you can't access the raise hand button that uh, you can view on the Zoom app or desktop version, um, if you dial star nine, um, the host will be able to see that the attendee has raised his, her, their hand. Okay, how do you do roll call votes? In what order would you recommend going through the list of board members? It always seems earlier that voters might influence later votes if the order is always the same. Um, you know, it's, it's really up to your neighborhood council to determine um, 
I believe city council does it either in alphabetical order. It, it goes straight through um, council one through 15. Um, we do understand um, maybe switching it up. Um, so we will provide some additional guidance on um, different ways in which you can do a roll call vote. Um, but maybe because we have some time, um, maybe what we can do is let's let's do it on the fly. Let's do a mock roll call vote with the panelists that we have here today on this training. Um, so today we have Gibson, myself, who is the chair. We have Raquel, Freddie, Jose, and Vanessa. Um, I'll give you a sample motion and um, how to conduct a roll call vote. Um, so I'll be the chair. Um, item number five, discussion and possible action to adopt the MER for April. Do we have a motion? I make the motion. Uh, I mean, Jose, uh, this is Jose. Uh, Jose makes the motion. Thank you, Jose. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Ready here, seconding. Okay, motion. second it. Seconded by Freddie, we have a motion on the floor. We do we have public comment? And this is where we'll work with the moderator, um, and the moderator will then give an announcement um, for uh, members of the public who wishes to speak. Pre please press star nine or press the raised hand feature to indicate your desire to speak. Um, and and um, and then the moderator will work on the back end to um, announce the speaker. So we're just gonna do a mock here. Um, so right now on the queue, and I'm acting as the role of the moderator, right now in the queue, we have um, someone by the name of something something LA. Um, I'm gonna unmute the speaker. Will you please identify yourself before your public comment begins? You will have 10 seconds. And that's Gibson. Good morning. Uh, thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Gibson making a public comment. Just want to thank you very much for uh, letting me speak. I want to support in this motion. I do believe it's a good motion and um, thank you very much. Thank you. And then as the moderator, I will remute the speaker. Um, I see another raised hand from uh, phone number ending in 358. And that's Vanessa. <laughs> Hi, thank you. I'd like to make public comment on this item. Uh, thank you for making copies available. I found um, on, on your website prior to this, I appreciate uh, you giving me time to uh, oh, I, continue my I'm public so sorry. comment. I'm so sorry, um, Vanessa. Um, your public comment time has elapsed, um, but please finish your last thought. Um, I just wanted to thank you all for meeting and scheduling this time uh, for us to come together. Uh, we've been through a lot. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you so much. And then you will remute the speaker. Okay, so, um, and then um, after public comment has concluded, we'll go into board member comment. So um, do I have any board members who wishes to speak? Um, please uh, indicate by raising your hand or pressing star nine. Okay. Uh, no speakers on the queue. Um, we now have a motion on the floor uh, made by Jose, seconded by Freddie, to adopt the April MER. And we will, uh, and uh, we're just going to assign Gibson to be the um, secretary and the recorder, and he will conduct the roll call vote. Go ahead, Gibson. Good afternoon, board. Good morning, board members. This is Gibson, uh, secretary. Just will be taking vo uh, roll call. And once I call you, please, um, please indicate your vote. Uh, Semi Park. Aye. Freddie. Aye. Jose. Abstain. Uh, Vanessa. Nay. And with that, we do have two yeses, uh, two yes, uh, two votes. One abstain, one nay. Madam uh, Chair. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. So the votes have it and the motion passes. Moving on to item number two. 
Um, so that's just a quick example. Um, um, and if uh, we do have a script available, but this was something we just put together on the fly. Um, so we will um, also provide additional resources. Um, going back into Q&A, can a board member participate as a technical assistant for a committee meeting without counting towards majority of quorum rules if they don't participate in the substance of that meeting? You know, that is actually a very good point. Um, we will have to consult with our neighborhood council advice division, our city attorney's office to see how that will work out. If the host who is setting up the meeting, the webinar is not a committee member, can that host participate because they're listening in? So we will get back with some definitive answers and guidance on that. Um, regarding a co-host account, can they be free accounts? Will the 40 minute time limit affect them? Uh, I'm gonna turn that over to my tech team. So and Gibson here, uh, I do apologize for that. At the moment, I'm not too sure about that question. We will follow up on that one. I do know they still give you the ability to make a co-host. I'm not sure on the time limit, um, but the host does does not have a time limit during the meeting. But with that question, I do apologize. I don't have an answer. I'll get your, that answer, uh, that, that question is answered. Thank you. If a technical problem occurs to where panelists cannot participate like vote, what do we do? Uh, what if a significant portion of the public, how do you continue the meeting? Um, so um, in terms of the panelists, um, I think first and foremost is preparation, making sure all of your board members are comfortable with how the meeting is going to be conducted. If it's some sort of technical issue, meaning um, like um, there's some issue with the internet connection or for whatever reason the screen freezes up or you're just not able to indicate, um, we will have to come back with some next steps on how to move forward. Um, um, and how to treat that technical glitch. Okay, all right, so we have 20 minutes. We're gonna jump into the next section, which is public comment. And so public comment in a virtual meeting. The public will attend virtual neighbor council meetings telephonically or via the audio only online Zoom platform. In both cases, a panelist, which is the board member, will not be able to see or view the speaker who is the attendee. Um, and this is regarding uh, public comment. The public will only be able to listen in and speak when unmuted by the moderator. With the meeting telephone number provided on the agenda, the public will not need a Zoom account, a computer, or internet access to participate in a neighborhood council meeting. The public can join the NC meeting as an attendee by dialing the teleconference phone number provided on the agenda and entering the webinar ID number when prompted. Once the attendee enters, enters the meeting, they will be automatically muted and will continue to hear the meeting. During a public comment period, an attendee may request to speak by dialing star nine over the telephone or by utilizing the raised hand function on the Zoom platform. The moderator will then unmute and recognize each speaker one at a time to take public comment. With all neighborhood council meetings, the public must be given the opportunity to comment on one, matters listed on the agenda, which is agenda item public comment, and two, matters that are not listed on the agenda but are within the subject matter jurisdiction of the neighborhood council, which is the general public comment on non-agenda items on your agenda. Reasonable time restrictions may be placed upon public comment, but any such regulation should be listed on the agenda announced at the start of public comment and equitably enforced without regard of the speaker's viewpoint. NCs have the discretion to set the time limit on public comment, but remember to be equitable in distributing the time among speakers. In other words, if no speaker, if one speaker is provided more time to speak, 
all speakers must be given equal time to speak. Um, so going back to our earlier, um, kind of like our mock roll call vote, um, we had a speaker, Vanessa, who exceeded the 10 second public comment time. And we're not recommending doing 10 seconds in your virtual meetings. We're just doing it for the purpose of this exercise. Um, but she exceeded the 10 minutes in which um, I did offer to allow the speaker to finish her thoughts. Um, so if you are going to do that, and because it's a little bit less abrupt than just saying, sorry, your time is up and muting that individual. Um, uh, if you choose to extend that courtesy to one, you have to also extend that courtesy to all. Okay, um, for agendized matters, public comment must be taken before the neighborhood council considers and votes on the agenda item. Therefore, agenda item public comment is typically taken after each time an agenda item is called. If a neighborhood council has a different method of taking public comment, for example, multiple agenda item public comment period, that neighborhood council should consult with the department's NEA or city attorney because there are additional agenda language and disclaimer that should be provided and the procedures are a little bit different. For matters not listed on the agenda, the opportunity to provide general public comment can be offered at any time during the meeting under general public comment on non-agenda items. Although the public is entitled to provide general public comment on any matter within the neighborhood council's jurisdiction, the neighborhood council cannot discuss or act on matters not listed on the agenda. The neighborhood council may at most briefly respond to general public comment by, for example, by asking a clarifying question or directing that matter to be placed on an agenda for consideration at a future meeting. A board member should not engage in a back and forth discussion with the public during public comment. At the start of the meeting and at every opportunity for public comment, the chair and or the moderator should provide verbal instructions to public attendees on how to indicate their desire to speak by dialing star nine or by the raise hand function on Zoom. That is because upon entering the meeting, attendees will be muted automatically and will not be and will be unmuted only by the moderator during the applicable public comment period. For agenda item public comment, the neighborhood council will typically follow the following steps. The chair announces the agenda item and reads the item description and opens public comment. Step two. The chair instructs the public on how to signal an intent to provide public comment by dialing star nine or by utilizing the raise hand function on Zoom. The moderator recognizes each speaker by name or by the last four digits of their phone number and unmutes that speaker and asks the speaker to identify him, her, themselves before speaking. If you follow the recommended settings that we have provided the speaker's phone number will automatically be redacted to reveal only a few phone numbers. Once the speaker's time has, oh, this is step four, sorry about that. Once the speaker's time has elapsed, the moderator will make an announcement. Upon completion of public comment, the moderator remutes, remutes the speaker, step five. Once all public comment is taken, the neighborhood council deliberates and votes upon the agenda item. A neighbor council can deliberate before or after public comment, but public comment must be taken before the board votes. For general public comment, the neighborhood council will typically follow the following steps. The chair opens the general public period. That's the first step. Step two. The chair explains the purpose of general public comment period, which are matters not listed on the agenda, but within the subject matter jurisdiction of the neighborhood council, and the amount of time each person is allotted to speak during general public comment. The chair, and step three, the chair instructs the public on how to signal an intent to provide public comment by dialing star nine or by utilizing the raise hand function. Step four. 
the moderator recognizes each speaker by name or by the last four digits of the telephone number, unmutes that speaker, and asks the speaker to identify him or her themselves before speaking. Here are some factors to consider when conducting public comment virtually. Think about your stakeholders and their needs. Neighborhood councils should foster a sense of community for all people to express ideas and opinions about their neighborhoods and government. How do virtual meetings change how your neighborhood council engages with stakeholders? How do virtual meetings change the way stakeholders participate? Are there any barriers such as language? What about the digital divide? These are all things to consider as you move forward with virtual meetings. You want to create a virtual meeting environment where all stakeholders feel welcome and your meeting is inclusive to all regardless of language or access to technology. We thank you for your participation as we embark on this journey together. So we'll see if there are any questions on this section. Okay. Um, in terms of a Zoom account, we are um, we are following up. Um, so we hope to get that done. We recognize kind of the time, um, kind of the time, the deadlines that we are on, um, especially with May first occurring on Friday, and taking into consideration the advance notice that you'll need to craft your agenda. I don't have a date yet, um, but please know we are aware of the need. Um, and the timeliness of this matter. So we are working to address this um, ASAP as soon as possible. I will also I'll also add to that because it's been it's been a it's something that we've been working on for for a long time. Even as of yesterday, we asked the Internet Technology Agency for the City of LA to assist us with getting a response back from from Zoom as soon as possible. So we we haven't been putting that on the sidelines. We started the process a couple of weeks ago, and um, this has been a big, a big project. But we're committed to it, and we'll, we're going to, we're putting pressure on on everybody involved to get us what we need in order to, to help you along. So thank you. Yeah, um, we do. Again, this re uh, this training will be recorded, um, and we are open to conducting more regional or additional trainings as well. Um, so please um, request um, if you would like more of these trainings to occur. If a panelist or board member needs to recuse themselves from an agenda item, do they need to disconnect from the Zoom meeting or just leave their room for that agenda item? Um, so Zoom does have a waiting room feature, um, and Jose, um, he can speak a little bit more on that. But let me also preface by saying um, we will have to consult with our city attorney's office to get uh, specific guidance on how to deal with recusals. Um, but Zoom does have a couple a feature which allows you to remove a panelist. Um, yeah. So hi, this is Jose. Uh, so regarding the the handling of recusals, uh, well, it'll come down to the board member will need to like, first announce that they'll need to recuse themselves uh, in order to uh, notify the moderator, the host or co-host of, of that meeting, handling tech, the, the technical aspect of it. Uh, that way they can put be pulled, they can be put into a waiting room where they're, they won't be able to participate, hear, listen, or be able to say anything um, while the rest of the board is then uh, taking action on, on that item. Mm -hmm. um, once that action is uh, already taken and they, the board has moved on to the next item, uh, then that board member can be brought back in by the moderator to, to, the, to the meeting um, again. Mm -hmm. and, it, they will be able to participate and communicate afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, but again, we will have to consult with our city attorney's office on specific guidance because um, in theory, that board member, although is removed from that meeting virtually into the waiting room, um, in theory, that board member still can dial in that in this with the same number still pop provided to the public and still potentially listen in. Um, so we're going to have to sort all that out. Um, so we will get back to folks on um, recusals. So um, 
does Zoom provide administrative report features that will show when participant panelists or attendees enters the webinar and leaves the webinar? And how does one ensure that quorum is maintained? Um, the tech aspect, I'll defer to our tech team, but when you, um, as the host or as the co-host, um, and I believe that just as a panelist, you're able to see um, all members of your panel, meaning your board, and if one person leaves that meeting, then um, you need to make sure you have enough board members still participating in the meeting virtually to maintain quorum. Um, I, in addition to that, one key thing about one uh, thing about Zoom is it also does have sound notifications. So sometimes when you're working and you're going through the meeting, what does happen is when someone does log off as a panelist, you do get a notification time that can uh, let you know someone has dropped off. In addition to that, um, Zoom does let you keep a let you know the tally of attendees who are inside of meetings. So at the at the moment right now we have about 154 attendees with six participants, which gives us a total of 160 participants. So that's one thing to be always on the lookout for is also the notifications that will come to you as a as a host or co-host when you're having the meeting. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Gibson. And as Gibson mentioned, um, Zoom will um, can kind of timestamp or show what time the or member left and that is also helpful for when you're doing your minutes um, because the commission's minutes posting policy does um, give some minimum specifications on what to include in your minutes which include when a board member arrives and when the board member leaves the meeting before the meeting has adjourned. Uh, going back to our Q&A, can board only chat function be used as backup to voting? And the answer is no, because our recommended settings uh, will disable chat. Uh, private chat is prohibited uh, between board members because you are having a private conversation that is not occurring in public. Um, so that is prohibited. And also thinking about it from uh, the public standpoint, um, because the public will be listening in, I think the key point really to remember is you are still conducting your meeting telephonically. Even though some of us will be able to access and view video, you still have to act and conduct your meeting as if it's telephone or voice only. So um, if you were to conduct a vote in chat, members of the public will not be able to see that vote. And that is why it's very important that the chair and the moderator with the moderator assisting, but the chair announce every single step of where we are on the agenda and the process and where we are in the vote as the meeting is being conducted. You'll also need to, um, as board members, before you speak, always good practice to state your name first so that members of the public listening in or even amongst your board members, you know who is speaking. All right, so we have five minutes left. We'll do a few more questions and then we'll wrap up. What if a person does not have access to a telephone? Brown Act State's public telephone conference location must be published. How will this requirement be addressed? Um, we will get back to you on this question because it is Brown Act related. Can public comment on non-agenda items beyond the scope and jurisdiction or authority of the council? Um, pu general public comment on non-agenda items um, must be, um, can be items that are within the subject matter jurisdiction of the neighborhood council. Um, so for example, if someone is talking about um, like they're walking their dog and it was raining and they really don't like so-and-so, um, you will be able to um, inform the speaker to speak on matters within um, the jurisdiction of the neighborhood council to redirect the speaker um, to speak um, to the agenda item. Does Zoom show those requesting to talk in order they re in the order they requested to talk? 
Um, no. So, and then there's also another question about how do you host, how does the host keep track of the public speaker and who has spoken? What if two or more speakers sharing the same advice, device, how do you regulate public comment? Is there already, such as um, if they've already spoken? Um, so these are all things where um, you will need to work with your board members or your team or work with the department to sort this out on the back end. Um, we, when we were conducting our commission meeting, um, we had staff, including Gibson, Eric Capitan, our commission administrator, and also Jose working together, um, keeping a Google sheet on the back end, listing who raised their hand first, who raised their hand second, and then had each agenda item. Um, and so that we can list on a separate sheet, this is the order that we will be going by. Um, but there, there are additional ways in which you can adapt um, how to maintain public comment. What is the typical range of public comment time across neighborhood councils? Um, generally speaking, I've seen two minutes um, for general public comment. Um, sometimes I've seen one to two minutes per agenda item. Um, if some of the folks here want to share if they've seen something differently. Okay, um, another question, can the, pub can the public comment on presidential comments? Yes, members of the public will be able to comment on every single agenda item, which can include uh, like a welcome or welcome remarks as well, if that's listed as an agenda item. So please note, um, it doesn't happen very often, but um, it, they, uh, members of the public are able to comment on every single agenda item. Can the moderator be a non-board member? Um, we'll, we'll get back to you on that, um, whether or not we can have uh, non-board members assisting your neighborhood council. And we are just um, out of time. So what we're going to do is kind of move on to how to contact us. Uh, we will be releasing some evaluation surveys, but Raquel, let me turn it over to you. Thank you very much, Semi, and um, I do offer you a round of applause um, on behalf of the department for the work that not only you did, but all of the team members um, that have worked very closely in this short period of time um, in, this, in this arena, as, as you said in your introduction, there, is no, there are no models out there for us for a particular in a neighborhood council system or a community-based system. Um, that is as intricate as ours. So I thank you. I thank Vanessa Serrano, who has been leading uh, a lot of this effort on the back end, the technical team, which includes um, Jose Galdames and uh, Gibson Nayambura, and also Freddie um, Coopin Ames, who has been, uh, they have been terrific and conducted a lot of research about uh, what, what the best practices and best experiences have been for others. You all on the listening tour have said many things to me, um, realizing that I've, I've attended all but about 12 neighborhood council meetings. And one of the things that you said to me over and over and over again was that you wanted us to provide you ex ex explanations, guidance, and protocols in advance. You didn't want us to be telling you that you made a whole bunch of mistakes when they were perhaps some processes and procedures that could have been made known to you before you got started so that your, your decisions would not be in question. That's what we've attempted to do in this Empower LA virtual governance plan, timeline, protocols, and all of the training materials that we've made available. But this is not an arena. These applications like Zoom are not designed perfectly for this kind of decision-making arena. They're just not. I'm suspecting they'll have a lot of changes in, in the future because the, the market is gonna demand it of them. So that means that we really want you to stay in conversation with us. We really want you to share your experiences. Let us know how it goes. Let us know what didn't make sense of what we prepared. This is your direct feedback to us. We will listen. We've listened in the past. We're gonna to continue to listen to you in the future. 
So with that, I'll close and let you know that we, we are just here for you and we'll continue to try to make this uh, as best a process as, as possible. Um, as I mentioned, um, I have mentioned before, a lot of questions come up about, although this is a very exciting arena and we wanna be able to do virtual meetings with all the pluses that come with being able to just get people together on, a, on an online or virtual platform, our ability to do this is tied to the governor's temporary modifications of the Brown Act. Even as social distancing um, rules, uh, if, as they get relaxed, and we certainly know that they will be relaxed, it's most likely going to be in phases as we see what's happening around the world uh, as it relates to countries and cities that are beginning to relax their social distancing um, rules. Our ability to continue to offer virtual meetings and for neighborhood councils to do that is tied to the Brown Act. So even if there's a, if meetings um, are relaxed and you're able to meet together physically and you decide that you prefer to continue to have your meetings um, virtually, it will be subject to the temporary modifications to the Brown Act that are in effect right now. So basically this is good to go as long as those um, temporary modifications are, are still in uh, available to us. So do stay in touch with us, keep, keep posted. I sent a tremendous amount of data in the monthly profiles that tell you what we learned from you. And there's, a, there's, extensive, uh, there's an extensive summary there. So do take a look at it and learn more about what your colleagues have shared with us as neighborhood council leaders. We wish you good luck. We know that you'll do a good job and, uh, and do, do stay in touch with us. Thank you very much for allowing us to serve you. Thank you, Raquel. And just very similar very to- Very welcome. Um, thank you. What the city council does, um, we do want to adjourn this training in memory of two um, individuals uh, in memory of Ron Ziff, the former president of Sherman Oaks Neighborhood Council, and Cindy Sauer, former president of Sun Valley Area Neighborhood Council. Um, we will miss them, and we certainly um, appreciate all that they have done for the community. Um, so with that, we thank you for attending.